Hello everyone, Hyper here. In this video, I will be trying to predict the tanking meta going into BFA's first Mythic Plus season. And of course, this video will be formatted similar to the DPS one, where I took the six tank specs and then broke them down and separated them by tier. For the tank specs, I will only have three tiers rather than four because there's less of them, but it will range similarly like in the DPS video from S tier, which is the ultimate meta tanks that will see most use at the high end, going to tier 1 and tier 2. Please keep in mind that if you're just trying to get your weekly keys done and you're just doing 10s or maybe a little bit above that, this doesn't really apply to that. The meta discussion that I have in this video applies to the very high end where people are trying to squeeze out every little ounce of performance and are min-maxing to the extreme to get the best times and push the highest keys. This means that if you're just a more casual player, all of the tanks are definitely viable and you can play any one of them if you're doing Mythic Pluses. And you don't really have to worry about picking one based on these tiers and the way I rank them. However, this means that the classes and the specs that the top tier players choose to play does affect the community's perception of the rest of the specs and those specs themselves. Let's get started and talk about tier 2, which is the bottom tier. Here we have the Protection Warrior and the Brewmaster Monk. Even with the revamp toolkit, Protection Warrior still lacks one major thing, and this is burst AoE damage, or really sustained AoE damage for that matter. One of Pro Warrior's biggest issues in dungeons is threat issues, because after the rework threat going into BFA, Tanks really need some sort of either AoE offensive cooldown or good burst damage and sustained AoE damage to be able to hold threat from DPS, especially if those DPS have major cooldowns and are just doing a lot of burst damage. Protection Warrior doesn't really have the toolkit to keep up with this, and that means that it's heavily reliant on things like Rogue's Tricks or Hunter's Misdirects. And if you don't have those classes in your groups, Pro Warrior will feel much much weaker. On the other hand, Pro Warrior does still have decent mitigation and their self heal is okay, but it's definitely on the lower side compared to some of the other tanks in the higher tiers. The second spec in this tier was the Brewmaster Monk. While Brewmaster looks like it will be very good in raiding, they have the same issues as in Legion when it comes to dungeons. Their AoE damage is decent, but not really comparable to the S tier tanks. The biggest problems is that they rely on healers much much more than all of the other tanks. And this is a significant issue in Mythic Plus, where you want your tank to be able to take care of himself for the most part. Obviously this has been kind of changed and they're trying to move away from this idea going into BFA. But still we see that the top tanks are able to self-sustain very efficiently compared to the tanks that we have here in tier 2. Brewmaster Monks also have pretty limited utility, and the utility that they do bring is simply replaceable by DPS classes. So for example, they bring a stun, they bring the knockback, but all of those can be brought by other DPS classes. So for a tank to be good in Mythic Plus, they need some different sort of utility that DPS players can't really bring. Moving up to tier 1, here I place the Protection Paladin and the Guardian Druid. So first talking about the Prop Paladin, they have decent AoE damage for picking up mobs or they're able to hold threat. They have both offensive and defensive cooldowns which is very important in Mythic Plus because a lot of the time offensive cooldowns on tanks, while it might seem a little weird, they do help quite a lot especially at the higher keys. They also have good utility through the different blessings and lay on hands and they bring off healing to the group. The second tank in this tier was the Guardian Druid. The removal of the artifact ability and legendaries affected the Guardian Druid pretty hard but I think it barely makes it to this tier as it is. So Guardian Druid still brings some utility through Stamp Rower, Incap Rower and the various CC that they have. And this spec will mostly depend on tuning when it comes to how well it does in Mythic Dungeons. For example, in the beginning of Legion, in the first few raid tiers, we saw that Guardian Druid was so overtuned that it didn't really take any damage, and its AoE damage output was also very good. 
So even it, with its limited toolkit and its major offensive CD being removed from the game because of the loss of the artifact um, weapon, Guardian Druid has been significantly hindered. However, because of these losses, I expect that the Guardian Druid will be tuned numerically to be on par with the rest of the tanks. Now moving up to the S tier, which are two tanks that stand out way above the other ones in Mythic Plus because of the utility they bring, the CC they have, the way their offensive and defensive cooldowns work, as well as just the overall design of the spec. And you probably already know it's the Vengeance Demon Hunter and the Blood DK. First of all, let's talk about the Blood DK. Mop control from Mass Grip and Single Grip is huge, and while Blood DKs have Gorfin's Grasp, even though it's been nerfed, it is still a huge utility tool, and it really helps out DPS. Blood DK also brings its own slow, and that is very important when you're trying to kite mobs, and Blood DK does an especially good job at this because the slow that it does bring also deals damage, and on top of that, Blood DKs also put a dot on every single target. So this means that even while kiting, Blood DKs are able to do significantly more damage than other tanks. This spec is also not as reliant on healers as the other tanks. Which means that, for example, on trash mobs and on big packs, big pools, which are typically seen in the higher keys, Blood DKs are able to sustain a lot because of the reworked talent tree and the new talents that they got, and this takes a lot of the pressure off the healer, because they're able to focus more on the DPS, or if most of the damage is avoidable at the higher end, the healers can actually focus more on damaging than they do on healing. Another thing that's great about the Blood DK is that it has burst AoE damage, which makes holding threat much easier, and its defensive cooldown is pretty short as well as the offensive, even though DRW has been indirectly nerfed through the removal of the artifact weapon, it is still a decent offensive ability that we can use just for that um, threat generation and given the ability to hold aggro against big bursts of damage. And then the last tank here is the Vengeance Demon Hunter and even though it's in the same tier as Blood Death Knight and they're about equal, I would give the slight edge to the Vengeance DH. They bring extremely good mob control through the Silence, Grip and the Fear Sigils. So they have the mass grip range, which is the same as the blood decays. It is a just a little bit weaker because you're it does have a little ramp time, and also you're not able to target it on a specific mob, rather on a location. So if mobs happen to run around, then you might miss one. But overall, if used properly, it can be just as effective as mass grip. The second thing with the vengeance DH is that it has a damage and defensive cooldown through meta and then other small cooldowns and that really puts it in a really good position to deal big amounts of damage when it needs to and also have good defensive abilities for boss fights for example. They also have great mobility and with purge actually removed from the blood decay and added to the vengeance demon hunter they bring more utility. On top of this especially if you tend to stack ranged and spellcasters in your group they do bring that 5% extra spell damage. So Vengeance DH, just like the Blood DK, really excels at mob control, which is extremely important for a tank when it comes to Mythic Plus, as well as the ability to survive on their own without having to rely on a healer too much. I really think that the Vengeance DH and the Blood DK will remain kings in Mythic Plus, especially at the high end, but we'll see how this shapes up once BFA actually launches. If you think I placed any of the tanks in the wrong tier, please do let me know in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this topic. As a last point, I know I keep saying this over and over again, but this is just my opinion and the way I think the meta will turn out does not necessarily mean that this is how it will actually play out once BFA launches. If we see some tuning uh, hiccups, such as we saw with the Guardian Druid early in Legion where it was taking essentially no damage, things like that can really shake up the meta and switch up which tanks are really good in Mythic Plus and then which ones are less used. If everything plays out the way I am assuming will play out, this is kind of the list that I had in mind. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. If you would like perks such as joining my Discord or having your name mentioned in the description box, or perhaps even submitting questions to a monthly AMA, check out my Patreon, which can be found in the description box. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.